Good morning, everybody. Today we are uh, explaining about geographical coordination system. Uh, when we speak about geographical coordination system, we are specifically talk about uh, how to address uh, any entity or any object onto the Earth or onto the Earth surface. For this purpose, we use a geographical coordination system. So, geographical coordination system mainly defined in a very simple manner with the longitude and latitude. The latitude, as you can follow here, uh, is a slice from north to south or vice versa, from south to north. And we have a longitude which are draw from the west to east or east to west. This, this line draw from the center of the earth in order to help us to give any reference to any point. For instance, when we talk about, let's imagine this point, we call it 55 degree into the north or let's say 45 degree to the west. So you are able to find this point. As you remember the part of the geographical definition or GIS, GIS was a system or the tools that integrate the spatial data with attribute data. Up to now we learn how to work with attribute, but uh, this is just part of the issue. But we need from now on work with spatial data. Therefore, we need this geographical coordination system to define a location on Earth. This is up to now. For this purpose, first of all, we have some definition up to here. First, we, call, uh, we talk about the geographical coordination system, but most of the time, geographical coordination system wrongly called datum. I'm going to tell you what is a datum. Actually, datum is a part of this, let's say, system, this geographical coordination system. For this purpose, imagine this uh, blue line our Earth. You know that Earth is not a sphere. It has some valley, mountain, some part go, let's say, down, some part go up. But mathematically, we are assuming it is like this ellipse, this red ellipse. We just assume it mathematically. In order to make the project or in order to make our assumption easy, we just assume it, this uh, geoid or this blue line, which is our earth, this closed blue line, which is our earth, we call it geoid from now. We assume it, it is like this a red let's say ellipse. We call this one, this, let's say, red ellipse, which is fit actually somehow, not completely, not fully with our geoid, we call it global datum. Or we call it world geoid system or WGS84. Okay? which is back to the 1984. But as you can see, or as also I mentioned, this, uh, let's say, WGS84 or World Geodetic System is not completely fit with our, let's say, geoid. For instance, here is a fit. I mean this part, or let's say this part partially fit, but this part 
takes out of the world geodetic system. Or this part, vice versa, inside. In order to solve this issue, governments start to define a small ellipse according to the location. For instance, imagine very small circle I put here, or ellipse. I can fit this part, I can solve this problem here. Or imagine I put another ellipse or circle here. I can also solve this part. Okay? Like this one, like this uh, green one. They put this green circle, which is a local datum, and almost fit most of the this part of the geoid. Imagine this is one country. They just put this local datum. Why they put it? As I told you, in order to cover the most part of the geoid. If you just look at here, I'm going to tell you what is a projection. Uh, actually, let's tell you right moment. Projection means that you want to transfer this uh, ellipse surface into the flat, into the paper. In this time, if you use a wrong datum or the ones that not fit for you, you will face with a wrong measurement. Imagine here, with a one projection, they get value of the point x equal to uh, 244 and y equal to the 249. However, with another projection for a same point, they get totally different x and y value. This is result in a very big problematic issue. I am going to tell you how and what kind of the, uh, let's say, problem. Therefore, as I told you, the datum is a just a small part of the geographical coordination system. The geographical coordination system based on spheroid include angular unit of the measurement, a prime meridian, and a datum, a one datum. Now, uh, let's go to the down. What is projection? Maybe you remember from your primary school. Uh, they ask you to, let's say, to project the orange peel into the surface. Definitely you cannot do it without putting some cut. So you put some cut, for instance, like here, like this one, like this picture, like this figure, and then you are able to, let's say, distribute the orange peel on the surface. Okay? This thing, same thing happened to our earth. Because we want to draw these things on the paper, uh, we need to distribute or we need to, let's say, spur the earth surface onto the paper. So, if this is an imaginary earth, you will see what will be happening. Definitely, we have some distortion, as you can see here. For instance, the south pool become two parts, two different separated parts or America continent look like this one. It's uh, almost north part from the south part. 
this is what we talk actually. And as you can see here, this is the things that we are doing with our earth, like this one. The ones that you see, like here, this is just a, let's say, a distribution of the earth onto the surface. But as you can see, for instance, here, look at the Greenland, this white part. It is almost same size as Africa, which is not correct, definitely. It means that, therefore, we need to use a projection and datum according to the area that we want to use in order to decrease the distortion. We have different methods, let's say, this is one method, they start to, as you can see here, now the Greenland is uh, not the same as the Africa. So there are many different projection methods. For instance, as I told you, we put just two examples here, or one example also here, like the orange peel. We need to choose the ones that better and suitable for our region size, shape, height, or latitude. And accordingly, we are able to work on it. Now, let's come in, into the ground and talk about what happened in reality. Imagine this is our earth, this curve line, which is the start from I point, capital I, to the, let's say, capital E. Now, we want to put this curve line onto the paper. And imagine this uh, capital I and small e are our paper or our map surface. If we start to, let's say, convert this curve to the map surface, you will see the distortion here. Imagine you have a land on this, let's say, part or on this fragment from A to B. If we put your land onto the paper, your land become smaller than reality. Your, man, your land was A to B, but now this time become a small A to small B, which is smaller than reality. Now imagine your land for each square meter is, let's say, 1000 sterling. And imagine you have a hundred square meter, and then suddenly your map become, uh, your land become 80 square meter. You lost 20 square meter of your land, which means that multiple by 100 sterling. Now same thing, imagine someone else have a land on the capital D to capital E. After projection, his or her map, uh, his or her land, sorry, become more than reality. Therefore, we need to choose a right projection 
firstly, you need to use the small line, not like this one, the big. You need to put some small line, for instance, from here to here, another one from here to here, from here to here, and from here to here. In order to cover the whole curve with a one straight line, and you need to divide it with a three, four, or five pieces of the small line. Now, accordingly, maybe you hear it almost in a primary school, we have a different projection, like the ones that we see here, like the ones that we follow here. We have a cylindrical, we have a conical, and we have a azimuthal projection. These are help us to display a curved surface on a flat surface. But the ones that the ones that we are going to use here we use universal transverse mercator or we can call it UTM from now on. The UTM actually based on the central meridian and they put a imaginary cylinder onto the earth. Then they divide the area to the 60 different zone. As you can see from here, let's call this one zone one, it's go until here, which is zone 60. We have that 60 different zones. Some zones here will be changed in a almost, let's call it the North Pool. But we will use this. And also, we have a two part of the South and North. Imagine we will uh, try to address uh, Cyprus. Uh, Cyprus almost located here in the Mediterranean Sea. As you can see, uh, let's try to a bit on it. If this is a Cyprus island, if I'm just follow the direction, it is located on 36 zoom. And it is also on north part, which means that if we want to work uh, on a UTM or universe transfer mercator system for a Cyprus, we need to say that we are using UTM WGS84, which is derived from here, okay? And 36N, which means that we are working on node. We have a different also projection system like a Lambert or Albert based on the different method. And also we have a different, I forget to say that we have a different datum like this one, not 27, which is for a North America datum. 27. But you need to know what's the difference and you need to know which one is better for you. For instance, the datum of the, the projection system of the Turkey and here also different from the North Cyprus to South Cyprus even different. And this result in a different problem and different issue. And if you imagine looking here, this is a zero zero or, or which is a null island, which is here. Uh, null island uh, name which is given to the where prime meridian and equator meet each other. 
which is almost in the international water in the Gulf of uh, Guyana, and it's in the Atlantic Ocean. And they put this buoy in order to keep the location and this is the zero degree of the latitude and longitude for the datum of the WGS 84. And also the altitude of the here is equal to the zero and all the reference derived from here, we call it mean sea level. Then you want to give a reference to the level of the height or altitude, you will use this buoy uh, which has a zero MSL. And if you are, I don't know whether you catch or not, if you look into the, some professional architecture map, in part of it, especially in a site plan, they mention the MSL equal to let's say 200 something or 300 something according to the project and after that under the line they said that this msl in this project equal to r0 and accordingly the contour line start to shape this is about our uh, let's say small lecture in order to at least understand what is the issue about the coordinate, about the projection, what is the what geodetic system 84, what is the UTM and what is about the null island. This, after we download example 5a, we will extract it like always and put it here. Now we need to just make a folder connection, example 5a. We just add it here. You say that there is no a spatial reference. Since there is no spatial reference, uh, this map, the size and everything is not correct. If you measure something, this is definitely not correct. You need to manage this map with a reality. You need to, let's say, match, actually not manage, to match this map with a reality. This is a UAV image, which is taken by a drone, uh, and there is no coordinate right now. What we are going to do, we need to open a base map the ones that have a coordinate. You will open a base map from here, the imaginary one, and then add it here. Now we have a coordinate on the background. And we are able to give a reference. Why you open it? I'm going to explain. Because if you remember, when we open a fresh GIS, there is no coordinate, there is no reference, there is no projection. Nothing there. It is like a uh, fresh. From another point of view, this map, this image also fresh. There is no coordinate on it. Therefore, if we want to work, therefore we need to first open the area, the ArcGIS for us, add a base map on it in order to define or in order to coordinate our GIS area, as you remember, I told you that we have a different projection system. You need to define which projection system you are going to work. Okay? You are also can be do it from here. This is also another possible way because there is no coordination system, you are able to do it here. Add from here, 
1984 Convention Web Mercator Auxiliary Sphere. You also can do these things. But in order to make it easy, I tell you open the new one and add a base map. Because if you open a new one and add a base map, they automatically get this value from here. Both are okay. You can do it manually or you can do it automatically. Which one is good for you or which one is easy for you, it doesn't matter. Both are same. Now I have a map which is here as a base one. I need to transfer this one, this image, to the real world. This is right now not real. Either the size, either the location, latitude, longitude, height, nothing correct. I need to transfer this one into the, let's say, reality. How we are going to do? This is my fresh map. Now I add again. Actually, this is my fresh one. Now I put the map, which doesn't have a coordinate here. I put it here. Since this one doesn't have any coordination, it is located in here, in a null island. I need to move this uh, from Augusta Castle from null island to the Cyprus. How am I going to do? The first step, I will find my map. I'm going to the zoom to layer here. I need to find some well known and the fixed point, such as the corner of the, this ball or this soccer field or let's say this uh, scale here or this factory. These are fixed things. But don't use the ship or car or this kind of things because these are not a fixed thing. They are on the movement. Okay, but the castle wall, the corner wall is always fixed. I need to open a coordination. Let's open it. I need to open a toolbar Georeferencing from a customized toolbar georeferencing. I'm just open a georeferencing. This is a georeferencing. And I choose from Augusta Ball. As you can see, there is an add the control point. I will take first one, let's say this ball. Imagine, uh, not imagine actually, since this is uh, taken by drone. The top of the wall and the bottom of the wall are not fixed. Therefore, be careful which one you choose. We always try to choose the bottom one. Okay, this is the bottom one, this is the top. We choose the bottom one and give a one as a green. We need to transfer this point to the real map. How we are going to do, without any other click, I just close this one. And I am going to zoom to world imaginary map. You see, it is in null island, my first one. It is in null island because there is no coordinate. I will start to zoom. When you zoom, because it is uh, coming from internet, it takes a long time. So be patient and just once my one start to zoom. Otherwise, it is freeze and uh, you need to start from beginning. Therefore, just have some patience and look at to this earth, which is turned here. Then you can zoom once more. 
I'm going to find my location, which is a Famagusta in this shoreline. Again, one more zoom. And yeah, this is a jetty over here, so therefore it should be. Yes, here we go. We are always in the location. Again, have patience until everything loaded. The quality is fine now. Yes, it seems that I can put it. Let's move a bit this one to here. And I will bookmark my project, the area that I'm working on it. Let's call it. I want to do it quickly actually. Again, I will switch up this one and open this one. As you can see now, my map is coming from to here from the null island. Now I need a second point. Again, I will zoom to layer. Maybe I can say that take the I don't know, take the hotel castle this corner as my second number. Okay, this is my second number. Now I will turn off this one and uh, say go to the wall city, world imaginary. This is my second point. If I open this map, you see it is almost coming to the place, but I need also a third point. Maybe I can give, uh, let's say, choose this one. Maybe I can use this edge for a third point. I take this point again from the top. I take this hand, take it down. As you can see, almost it is in location a bit, maybe uh, one or two meter. Yeah, almost one or two meter. I will do it one more very quickly in a local map. You will understand uh, how it is going to work. Yes, almost correct. See? Now everything sits in the correct place, even the road. You see how road completely sit in a place. If you put many points, this is all of the point. We just put three points. We say this point in our source move to this location, this point move to that location, and the uh, other. But if you have many points from here, you can see your point and you can delete them or you can increase them. But how it is work in reality? In reality, you will take the coordinate of this point in the real map. You will go to the location with your GPS and take the location. Then come to here, choose the bonds. In order to use manually, right click, input X and Y from your GPS. Then hit OK. It is coordinate accordingly. OK, did you understand what I said? This is up to now. Is this finished? No. We need to save our map. Now our map has a coordinate, has scale, everything fine, even you can measure like a reality. This one actually measurement should be better to meter. Yeah, you'll see this one is a 12 meter not like the ones that I assume as a 4 meter or 6 meter. Everything now correct. Now I need to export this one into the reality. 
I will going to use this method. I will going to export the data. I choose this one, Augusta Castle data, export data. This menu coming. The spatial reference, the extent is okay, but the spatial reference, I will choose the current situation, not the original, because the original is not a coordinate. And I need to give a location. Where is my location? I will say my example file. Okay. I just choose the folder connection, not go inside of it, because if you go inside, you cannot add. Just choose your folder connection, then hit OK, add, and give some name. Let's say projected. Okay, and choose a TIFF because TIFF can get a coordinate value. And I am hit OK, save. It asked me, do you want to add it? Let's now say no. Now, if I am just open the example, uh, the ones that I am coordinated, this projected, it will be seen in a correct place. No any distortion. See how jetty is fit or this island or even the road. Everything match. If I open example three in here, even that one also coming to the correct place. If I choose a parcel, the parcel coming. If I choose the wall, the wall also coming, you see? Maybe you ask, can I use this uh, shape file? Of course, why not? I'm going to do it very quickly with the shape file. Okay, add data. I have this uh, parcel and wall. I will add it here. See, this is example three, the ones that you use. Now, I'm going also to add the Famagusta Castle, which doesn't have any spatial reference. If I am zoom it, it is inside the null island. Okay. Again, from a customize, I'm going to get my georeferencing toolbar. Sorry for this arch by Python. I take it from Augusta. I take my point. My first point is start from the, let's say from here. This time I get the top of it. Then I zoom to the other one. And I said that point come to here. You see? Now, uh, let's look at the shape. Uh, yes. Now I can say that it's better to use zoom layer. Yes. Now I can say that uh, this corner of the castle, Otello castle, zoom to layer, it is coming to, let's say here. We need also one more actually to tweet seems that enough. Yeah, maybe I can add some more. I can say this corner coming to here, which is now too much better. Yeah, almost everything sit. Yeah, three point is enough. But if you wish, you can add some other point. For instance, let's find somewhere else. Yeah, maybe I can say that this point come to here. Yeah, almost fine. And after that, you need to export this one, data, export data, the current situation, you need to choose a location, 
you see the example file, don't go inside of it, just choose it and just give name. Let's say based. This hit save. Here we go. And now, if I am open the this one also here, I said add data. Let's say based on the shape file, this will be open and come to here, but a bit different with the other one. But as I told you, we will accept uh, the correct way is used with the GPS. This is about this part. After projection, this is my original file, but after projection, I make a four new file, like this one like here this one you need to submit all these four files together how you can do it so it is very easy just choose and add to archive give your name your student number this four five and one six five double three and you need to submit this file okay don't submit this file that i giving to you this is not correct. Any question that you want to ask or you didn't get or you want to repeat? Okay, it seems that everything fine. If there is no question, I will stop our lecture here and wish you all the best and wish you have a good weekend. Thank you, Ajahn. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you, everyone. Bye bye. See you, See you my next week. See you, Ajahn. Have a good weekend. See you, sir. See you.